How's it going? I hope everybody is doing well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe so that you can be notified when I go live or upload a new video. And please like this video. So, this is going to be video number four, Bible study in the book of Genesis. We are beginning chapter... 24 Genesis 24 and I encourage you to please read along with me in the Bible in the Holy Bible King, New King, King James Version um, now in this chapter 24 that we're starting in it begins with Abraham he's starting to grow older now and he wants a son to marry but he tells his servant that he doesn't want his son to marry a Canaanite he wants his son to marry someone from his home because he doesn't want Isaac to fall away from his faith and in, in God because if he marries into another region he is afraid that his son will fall away from his beliefs okay so let's begin now Abraham <coughs> sorry Abraham was old well advanced in age and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things so Abraham said to the old oldest servant of his house who who ruled over all that he had please put your hand under my thigh and I will make you swear by the Lord the God of heaven and the God of the earth that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites amongst among who I dwell but you shall go to my country and to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac and the serpent said to him perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land must I take your son back to the land from which you come but Abraham said to him Beware that you do not take my son back there. The Lord God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my family, and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, To your descendants, I give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. And if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be re released from this oath. Only do not take my son back there. So he's telling the servant, don't take my son there. And if the woman, the, the to-be wife, will not follow you back here, then you're released from this oath. You're released from the promise. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this ma matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, for all his master's goods were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, sorry, to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels kneel down outside the city by a well of water at evening time, the time when women go out to draw water. Then he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, here I stand by the well of water and the daughter's of the men of the city are coming out to draw water now let it be that the young woman to whom I say please let down your pitcher that I may drink and she says drink and I will also 
give your camels a drink, let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. And it happened before he had finished speaking that behold, Rebekah, who was born to be to be through Thuel, son of Melchi, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her pitcher on her shoulder. Now the young woman was very beautiful to behold a virgin. No man had known her, and she went down to the well, filled the, her pitcher, and came up. And the servant ran out to meet her and said, Please, let me drink a little water from your pitcher. So she said, Drink, my lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down to, to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the thorough ran back to the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. And the man, wondering at her, remained silent, so as to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. So it was, when the camels had finished drinking, that the man look, took a golden nose ring, weighing half a shekel, and two bracelets for her wrist, weighing ten shekels of gold, and said, Whose daughter are you? Please tell me, please, is there room in your father's house for us to lodge? So she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, my Melchi's son, whom she bore to Nahor. Moreover, she said to him, we have both straw and feed enough and room to lodge. Then the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his mercy and his truth toward my master. As for me being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. So the young woman ran and told her mother, her mother's household, these things. Now Rebecca had a brother whose name was Laban. And Laban ran out to the man by the well. So it came to pass, when he saw the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrist, and when he heard the words of his sister, Rebekah, saying, Thus the man spoke to me, that he went to the man, and there he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, O blessed of the Lord, why do you stand outside? For I, I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. Then the man came to the house, and he unloaded the camels, and provided straw and feed for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the feet of the men who were with him. Food was set before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told about my errand. And he said, Speak on. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord had blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. And he has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female servants, and camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when he when when she was old and to him he has given all that he has 
Now my master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. But you shall go to my father's house and to my family and take a wife for my son. And I said to my master, Perhaps the woman will not follow me. But he said to me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angels with you and prosper your way. And you shall take a wife for my son, for my family, and for my father's house. You will be clear from this oath when you arrive among my family, for if they will not give her to you, then you will be released from my oath. And this day I come, I came to the well and said, O Lord, my master Abraham, O, o Lord God, of my master Abraham if you will not now prosper the way in which I go behold I stand by the well of water and it shall come to pass that when the virgin comes out to draw water and I say to her please give me a little water from your pitcher to drink and she says to me drink and I will draw for your camels also let her be the woman also who the Lord whom the Lord had appointed for my master's son but before I had finished speaking in my heart there was Rebecca coming out with her pitcher on her shoulder and she went down to the well and drew water and I said to her please let me drink and she said and she made haste and let her pitcher down from her shoulder and said drink and I will give your camels a drink also so I drank and she gave the camels a drink also then I asked her and said whose daughter are you and she said the da daughter of Bethuel Nahor's son whom Malachi bore to him so I put the nose ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrist and I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham who had led me in the way of truth to take the daughter of my master's brother for his son now if you will deal kindly and truly with my master tell me and if not tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing comes from the Lord. We cannot speak to you either bad or good. Here is Rebekah before you take her and go and let her be your master's son's wife as the Lord has spoken. And it came to pass when Abraham's servant heard their words that he worshipped the Lord bowing himself to the earth. Then the servants, the servant bought out jewelry of silver, jewelry of gold, and clothing, and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave precious things to her brother and to her mother. And he and the men who were with him ate and drank and stayed all night. Then they arose in the morning. And when and he said send me away to my master but her brother and her mother said let the young woman stay with us a few days at least ten after that she may go and he said to them do not hinder me since the Lord has prospered my way send me away so that I may go to my master so they said, We will call the young woman and ask her personally. Then they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. So they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and, their, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men.
And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, Our sister, may you become the mother of thousands of ten thousands. And may your descendants possess the gates of who those who hate them. Then Rebekah and her maids arose and they rode on the camels and followed the men. So the servant took Rebekah and departed. Now Isaac came from the way of Berlai, Roy for the for he dwelt in the south. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the evening and he lifted his eye and looked and there the camels were coming then Rebecca lifted her eyes and when she saw Isaac she dismounted from her camel for she had said to the servant who is this man walking in the field to meet us the servant said it is my master so she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. And he took Rebekah and she became his wife. And he loved her. So Isaac was comforted, comforted after his mother's death. Abraham again took a wife and her name was Keturah, Keturah and she bore him Zim okay let's see it was about five children and then it goes on and gives the genealogy of Abraham's children with Keturah all the way through chapter 25 verse 4 so we'll start with uh, 5 and Abraham came all and Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac but Abraham gave gifts to the sons of the concubines which Abraham Abraham had. And while he was still living, he sent them eastward away from Isaac, his son, to the country of the east. This is the sum of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived, 175 years. Then Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age. And full of years and was gathered to his people. And his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Mapelai, which is before Mamre, in the field of Ephron the son of Zohar and Hedite, the field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Heth. There Abraham was buried and Sarah his wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac and Isaac dwelt at Berlahai. Now this is the genealogy of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar and Egyptian, the Egyptian, Sarah's maidservant, bore to Abraham. So if you want to go over, let's see, chapter, or verse 13 through probably 15, that gives kind of a genealogy. Now we are going to go ahead, if you're following along, along, on verse 16. There were, oh, these were the sons of Ishmael, and these were the names by their towns, 
in their settlements, twelve princes according to their nations. These were the years of the life of Ishmael, 137 years, and he breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people. They dwelt from Havana as far as Havla, I'm sorry, as far as Shur, which is east of Egypt, as you go toward Assyria. He died in the presence of all his brethren. This is the genealogy of Isaac. Abraham's son, Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as wife, the daughter of Bethuel and Syrian of Pelan, Aram, the sister of Laban, and the Syrian. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. But the children struggled together within her, and she said, if all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger and the other. Or one people shall be stronger than the other. And the older shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over, so they called his name Esau. Afterward, his brother came out in his hand, took hold of Esau hills, Esau's hill, so his name was called Jacob. Isaac was sixty years old when she when she bore them. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful, skillful hunter, and a man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man, dwelling in his in tents. And Isaac loved Esau, because he ate of his game but, but Rebecca loved Jacob now Jacob cooked a stew and Esau came in from the field and he was weary and Esau said to Jacob please feed me with that same red stew for I am weary therefore his name was called Edom but Jacob said, "Sell me your." But Jacob said, "Sell me your birthright." As of this day. And Esau said, "Look, I am about to die. So what is this birthright to me?" Then Jacob said, "Swear to me as of this day." So he swore to him, and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils, lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. There was a famine in the land. Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of Philistine and Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven, 
I will give to your descendants all these lands, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statues and my laws. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And the men of the place asked about his wife. And he said, She is my sister. For he was afraid to say, She is my wife. Because he thought, Lest the man, the men of the place, kill me for Rebecca. Because she is beautiful to behold. Now it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked through a window and saw, and there was Isaac showing endearment to Rebekah his wife. Then Abimelech called Isaac and said, Quite obvious, she is your wife. So how could you say she is my sister? Isaac said to him, Because I said, Lest I die on account of her. And Abimelech said, What is this you have done to us? One of the people might soon have lain with your wife, and you would have brought guilt on us. So Abimelech charged all his people, saying, he who touched this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he has possessions of flock and possessions of herd and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Now the Philistines had stopped up all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father. And they had filled them with earth. And... Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the name which his father had called them. Also, Isaac's servant dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herd herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the well Isaac because they quarreled with him then they dug another well and they quarreled over that one also so he called its name Sitna, Sitna. and he moved from there and dug another well and they did not quarrel over it so he called its name Rehob Rehoboth because he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Then he went up from there to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him the same night, and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord and he pitched his tent there and there Isaac's servant dug a well. Then Abimelech came to him from Gerar
with Ahuzas, one of his friends, and Pichol, the commander of his army. And Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me, since you hate me and have sent me away from you? But they said, We have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. So we said, Let there now be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you, that you will do no harm since we have not touched you, and since we have done nothing to you but good, and have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed of the Lord. So he made them a feast, and they ate and drank. Then they arose early in the morning, and swore an oath with one another, and Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. It came to pass the same day that Isaac's servant came and told him about the well which they had dug, and said to him, We have found water. So he called it Sheba. Therefore the name of the city and Beersheba to this day. When Esau was forty years old, he took his wives, Judith the daughter of Biri the Hittite, and Bashemeth the daughter of Elon and Hittite. And they were a grief of mind to Isaac and Rebekah. Okay, I think I'm well. Let's see. We are still in Genesis, and we are going to be here for a while. If I don't, I think I'm going to have to maybe do these Bible studies more often so we can get through this because we we need to get to revelations quickly um, especially with all these world events going on we need to understand what's going on in the world and what's to come um, I'm going to leave it off there and we will start on chapter 27, Genesis 27, on the next Bible study. Let's see. Okay. Let me write that down. Alright, so. I really hope you guys have a wonderful night. Um, God bless you guys. I hope you guys have, you know, a great night. I, I was kind of debating on whether I wanted to go on and do chapter 27 and then try to do a few more chapters, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I will try to pick this up where we left off tomorrow evening. Um, because, and, and I want to try to have Genesis finished tomorrow. So, that way. And then, you know, again, I do encourage you guys to follow along with your Bibles so that you guys can... Um, see for yourself and then also when after you watch the video and you go over it then I encourage you to do your own research too and just find out more about you know thing that there's just so much to learn you know so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end it here, and I will pick this back up tomorrow.